Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardinal's Cauldron here at Geetopia Island. I'm Cardinal. And I'm Kevin. Today, uh, we're going through a, I don't know, a fever dream of a deck that I just put together, and it, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. But you be the judge of that, of course. Before we do, we go ahead and remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and the link will be down below for that. Today, we are going through Arter Snack Attack. And it's basically a bunch of artifacts in standard. And I want to see how it goes. And basically one super control card that's in every single deck at the moment. But the first card, of course, is Stone, Stone Coil Serpent. It's a X cost artifact snake. Reach, trample, protection for multicolored. It gets a, enters the battlefield with X 1-1 one, one counters on it. So it's just a big beefy boy and it can do a lot of work for sure. Yeah, the big snake has always been really, really good. It's just super good. Uh, next is the Crystalline Giant. It is three drop, three, three. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at random that Crystal Giant doesn't have on it. And among flying, first strike, death touch, hexproof, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, vigilance, and 1 1. All of them. Put a counter of that kind on Crystal Giant. So the more creatures you have with those abilities, you can, or you just you just choose one every turn. You're just like, oh, he gets this. Yeah, he randomly gets this, go and keep swinging and keep having fun. Mm -hmm. Next one is the. Uh, I was going to do a straight colorless, <clears throat> but I thought this one card made it where I can actually have one color at least. And that's Emery, Lurker of the Lock. It's two and a blue, one, two. Uh, this spell costs one less for each artifact you control, so it can cost one blue. Uh, enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library in the graveyard, and then you get tap, choose target artifact card from your graveyard, you may cast it this turn. So therefore you can just, you, it does a little board wipe, this comes in later, and then you can just keep casting all your dudes from the graveyard. And it does say cast, so your Stone Coil Serpent, you can cast him again for X. X, yeah. And be yeah. like, cool, big dude. So early game, you can be like, I have a 1-1 one, one or a 2-drop that's going to keep beating. And then later on, it's just like, all right, well, now I have a 5-5, five, 7-7. Five, seven, seven. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, next is the Far Finder. It is a 3-drop, 1-1 one, one fox. In his battlefield, you may search the library for basic land, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Yep. It's just a little dude that helps you get in land, which is really good. Yep. It's, it's really helpful. And that's what, it's going to be weird, but we are doing ramp in this deck as well. And uh, another good old beast is a Spark Hunter Manticore. It's a three drop, three four, which is pretty good for its stats, but as an additional cost to cast the spell, discard a card, which you can hopefully get back with the Lurker. Protection from Planeswalkers, which nowadays, uh, Teferi's gone, so no one really cares about playing Planeswalkers anymore, which is crazy. But you can pay one, deals one damage to target Planeswalker, or the most important thing is you pay three, it gains indestructible into in a turn. Straight up. This 3-4 uh, indestructible is pretty good. Uh, next we got the Myriad Construct. It is a 4-drop, four 4-4 four, four with Kicker 3. Uh, if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with a one counter on it for each non-basic land your opponent controls, which is, could be a lot right now. Yeah. Uh, and then whenever it becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it and create a number of 1-1 one, one colorless artifacts equal to its power. So the more like non-basics they have, the more it gets, and then you just get to have a lot of free dudes. Yeah, exactly. And Playing against this is actually pretty annoying because, you know, most people are just going to try to kill with a kill spell, but now they have to sacrifice creatures to deal with it if you don't get uh, a bunch of little dudes. Another little rent card is Solemn uh, Simulacrum, or Sad Robot, as everyone yeah. used to call it. It's a 4-drop, 2-2. Two, two. Enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic <clears throat> land card, put that card in the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. And then when it dies, you draw a card. So be able to just... Keep doing this is pretty awesome. Yeah, sad robots, real strong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the next up is the Bubble Snare. It is one blue, an enchantment aura, with kicker, blue, and a two. Enchanted creature. When it enters the battlefield, it feels kick, tap, tar tap, enchanted creature. An enchanted creature doesn't untap during its untap step. So, just control. Yeah, you can pay one and just may play it and not let a dude untap, but if you kicker it, they it forces a dude tapped. Yeah, as always when I build these decks, I build them with all creatures and they're like, oh yeah, I need control. <laughs> so this is what I have to be like, this is pretty cheap and it's one blue so you don't have to worry about it. Also, because of the lurker, I decided to throw in this weird one, Scaldring Cauldron. It's a one drop artifact, but you can pay three and it does three damage to target creature and you sacrifice it. So, so to be able to keep hopefully doing this over and over might be good. And most creatures nowadays aren't really that big. Like, mm -hmm. most of the time it's just rogues. And you could just kill them off quickly. Or that new 2-2 white creature that exiles a dude. That guy's super annoying now. 
Next up is the Midnight Clock. It is a blue and two for an artifact. Tap at a blue. You can pay a blue and two, put an hour counter on Midnight Clock. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on this. <clears throat> when the 12th hour counter is put on this, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards. Exile Midnight Clock. So it's just an extra way to get counter or to get extra cards. It'll yeah. take a little bit, but if you have nothing else to do, you're just like, cool, put counters on it. Done. Yeah, and it's a little mana ramp spell as well. We only have one in the deck, but I just felt like it might be able to help. And it's on each upkeep, yours and theirs. Yeah. So you get counters all the time. Exactly. Now the main reason the deck, of course, is Forsaken Monument. It's a five drop legendary artifact. Color colorless creatures you control get plus two, plus two. And whenever you tap a permanent for a waste, add an additional waste. And then whenever you cast a color spell, you gain two life. So this is like the, the cornerstone of the deck to be able to hopefully draw to it, ramp to it really quickly, and just overwhelm your opponent with all your small little dudes. Especially when the construct dies, then it's just like a bunch of three threes that yeah, you have. Yeah, you get a whole bunch of little big things. And to be able to cast it back and hopefully do it again. But that's, I wanted to use this in standard while it's here, I guess. Uh, and next up is Ugin the Spirit Dragon. He's an 8-drop 7 uh, loyalty planeswalker. He's super strong. Yeah. Uh, plus 2, he deals 3 damage to target creature or player. Minus X, exile each permanent career mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. Minus 10, you gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, and put 7 permanents from your hand into play. Yeah. I will take that all day. Yes. I feel like if it gets too much, this card is the next one to get banned. Because every deck is now just, I kill you a bunch, and I play Ugin, and I win. And if you don't have an immediate answer for this, you just, you win. Yeah. Every time. You're yeah. like, wipe your board. Uh, take three. Take three. Take three. It's just, that's how it is. And you just win immediately with this guy. Now, uh, with the colorless uh, deck, we have a bunch of colorless lands, actually, but it has special uh, utility to them. First one is Bonders, uh, or Bounders and Enclave. Jeez, I couldn't talk. Tap for a waste so it can double on the, the monument. Pay three, draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with four or greater, which you hopefully possibly will. And then Crawling Barons, which is a new rare land that I've been wanting to play. It's tap, add a waste, and then pay four. Put two one one counters on Crawling Barons, and then you may have it became a zero zero creature, uh, elemental creature token until end of turn. It's still land. The best part about this is you can just put two counters on it without making it a creature so it doesn't die when they're like, okay, kill it. So you can make it like a 4-4 four, four, or 6-6 six, six before you decide to swing with it or block with it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this land's pretty awesome. Yeah. And of course we have the basic islands just to get there, but then we have Labyrinth of Scopus or Scopus. Uh, tap for a waste, then four, tap, remove target attacking or blocking creature from combat. This is just a, you know, help out you yeah. control. It's a mystifying maze. Yeah. It's it's really nice. It's really costy, but still, it can work, I think. We'll see, for sure. Uh, but with that, that is the deck. Uh, the deck list will be down below. We'll see how it goes on Arena. <laughs> it probably won't do too much, but I hope I can at least play the Monument once and just be happy for it, pretty much. Or ramp up to Ugin super quick with the colorless ramp. I think it'll be okay. Uh, I really do. I mean, it seems fun. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But with that... Uh, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island, and you have a good day. Goodbye. Later. Also guys, make sure you hit that like button down below, and subscribe to our channel, and then hit that bell for any future notifications that you have for our videos. And we go ahead and give a big uh, thank you to our fans for over the years, especially our Mythic and Above Patreon followers. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, with that, we love you. Thank you for your support.